The following table shows the population of the U.S. in millions for years since 1990. So the first column gives the number of years since 1990. The second column gives the U.S. population in millions. One way to analyze data is to plot the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane and create what's called a scatter plot. A scatter plot for the data is shown here, where the horizontal axis is the number of years since 1990, and the vertical axis is the population in millions. The first question is, use the above scatter plot to decide whether the linear model fits the data well. To do this, if we can sketch a line on the coordinate plane where all the points are close to the line, then we could say a linear model does fit the data well. So if we were to sketch a line that looks something like this, notice how all the points are close to the line, and therefore it would be fair to say from analyzing the scatter plot that a linear function model is a good model for the data. Next, we're asked to let P of T be the population of the U.S. in millions for T years since 1990, and we're asked to find a linear model for the data. To do this, we'll be using the linear regression tool on the T84 graphing calculator. So for the first step, we need to enter the data. To do this, we press STAT and then ENTER. If there's any old data in the columns, we can go to the top of the column, press CLEAR and then ENTER, and the entire column will clear. And now we'll enter the first column in L1, which is the number of years since 1990. So we have 3, enter, 5, enter, 7, enter, and so on. Arrow to the right, and now enter the U.S. population in millions. 259.9, enter, 266.2, enter, and so on. It's a good idea to check all the values twice, because if we enter one value incorrectly, our linear model will be incorrect. Everything looks good here. So to perform linear regression, we press STAT, right arrow once to calculate, and then option 4 for linear regression. So we press 4. We have the first column in L1, the second column in L2, which is good. We're not using a frequency list. We have the option of storing the regression equation in, for example, y1. If we do want to do this, with the cursor in this row, we press vars, right arrow to y vars, enter, and then enter on y1, and this will automatically store the regression equation in y1. So we'll press enter, and enter one more time on calculate to perform the linear regression. So notice how a will be the slope of the linear function, and b will be the vertical intercept. There's one other thing that we can do. We can turn the diagnostics on, so the calculator will also give us the correlation coefficient, which is r, as well as the coefficient of determination, which is r squared. This would help us decide whether the linear model is a good model for the data. To turn the diagnostic on, let's go to the catalog by pressing second and then zero. If we press D, which is here, it'll take us down to D. You can scroll down to Diagnostic On. Here, oops, that went too far. Go back up to Diagnostic On, press Enter, and then Enter again. And now let's run the regression again. We'll press Stat. Right arrow to calculate, option four for linear regression, and we'll have the same settings. So again, if we do want to store the regression equation in one of the y variables, we can press vars, right arrow, enter, enter for y1. Of course, this step is optional. Enter, and then on calculate, press enter again. The closer r squared is to one, the better the model. And because r squared is very close to one, our model is very good. Because r is close to 1, this tells us we have a very strong positive linear correlation. Let's go ahead and write down our model, and we'll round a and b to three decimal places. So the slope or a will be approximately 
0.865, and B is approximately 252.375. So P of T equals 2.865T, we're using T as the input variable, plus 252.375. And now that we have our model, let's answer the next two questions on the next slide. The next question is estimate the number of people in the year 2015. To do this, we first need to determine the value of t that represents the year 2015. For 2015, the value of t is going to be equal to the desired year of 2015 minus the base year of 1990. 2015 minus 1990 is equal to 25. So to make a prediction for the population in 2015, we need to determine the function value p of 25. So we'll substitute 25 for t, so we'd have 2.865 times 25 plus 252.375. Let's evaluate this on the calculator. So we'll enter 2.865 times 21 plus 252.375, enter, and we have 312.54. Remember, P of T is in millions, so the estimate is 312.54 million people in 2015. And for our last question, we're asked to use a model to predict the year in which the U.S. population will reach 320 million. So for this question, we're given that P of T is equal to 320. So we first need to determine the value of T, which should give us a number of years since 1990. And then from there, we'll determine in what year that would be. So if we substitute 320 for P of T, we'd have the equation 320 equals 2.865T plus 252.375. So to solve this linear equation, we first isolate the t term by subtracting 252.375 on both sides. Simplifying, this would be 0, so we have 2.865t equals this difference, 320 minus 252.375 is 67.625. Last step to solve for t is to divide both sides by 2.865. So on the right side, this simplifies to just t. And now we'll find this quotient, 67.625 divided by 2.865 is, let's say, approximately 23.6. So according to the model, the population will reach 320 million, approximately 23.6 years since 1990. We need to be careful when determining what year this should be, though. Notice how this value is between 23 and 24, where t equals 23 would correspond to the beginning of the year 1990 plus 23, which is the year 2013, and t equals 24, would correspond to the beginning of the year 1990 plus 24, which equals 2014. So because the value of t that we found is greater than or equal to 23 and less than 24, it would be sometime in the year 2013. We don't want to round this to 24 and say the year 2014, even though some textbooks may take this approach. For our question, we're going to say sometime in the year 2013, would be when we predict the U.S. population to reach 320 million. I hope you found this helpful.